Welcome, pool fans from around the world, to this special AccuStats production. My name is Derek Keith, and right behind me, hundreds of players and fans come to Caesar, Southern Indiana, each January to compete in banks, straight pool, one pocket, nine ball, and this special event, it is the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, in the arena here, are we ready for the finals? We have witnessed some amazing pool so far, some huge TPAs, and this match is going to be greater than all of them, I suspect. We have two great champions, but only one will be the winner, and we're going to crown a brand new this year uh, Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge champion. It's time to find out who it's going to be. First up, he defeated Ruiz in round one, Darren Appleton in round two, and Jason Shaw just last match. Three-time European champion. He's a 2019 World Nine Ball Champion and the 2020 Moscone Cup Champion. Sponsored by QTech, Diamond, and Tom from Moscow, Russia. Make some noise from Fedor Gorst. <laughs> and his opponent beat Alex Kazakis in round one, Roberto Gomez in round two, and Mika Eminen last match. He's a 2017 Moscone Cup MVP, 2018 World Nine Ball Champion, and the 2019 U.S. Open Champion. He's sponsored by Predator, Gabriel's Tables, and Andy Cloth. From Bernin, Germany, the killer. Make some noise for Joshua Filler. <laughs> They're lagging for the break. Gonna send it up to the guys in the AccuStats booth. Hello, 10-ball fans. This match for supremacy of the 10-foot table pits our two youngest competitors of this world-class elite event. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones here. And Jeremy, give us something to look for. Well, a lot of, a lot of fireworks, Mark, first off. Um, sometimes it, you don't notice how great Fetter is because he's such a worker. Uh, but a little bit of a clash between the two styles. Um, nothing, nothing, like you said, he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, miss anything when it comes to every shot, that being the guy racking the balls right there. Fetter Gorst really goes through his process. I, th I think Josh does too. He just has a bit of a different process. It's just a little quicker, and as he gets rolling, it seems to get a little little faster as it goes. I expect maybe our first hill-hill match of the tournament. I know that mm -hmm. sounds kind of like, you know, cliche-ish here in the finals and the whatnot, but I just don't expect many mistakes. It, you know, if the shots after the break are somewhat equal, uh, we're going to have a close one. Of course, this won the lag, breaking off here in the first game. He got here by virtue of 12 break and runs, and his composite score of his opponent happens to be, of course, 33. His opponent's 17, and it's the same exact status for Filler. 12 break and runs, his composite score, 33-17. Couldn't get much closer. Okay, and a, a situation to start off here. I mean, there's a pretty dead kiss shot on the four here, it looks like to me. If you want to go offensive, pretty big pocket going to the mouth of the pocket off the one into the four with the cue ball. Probably a safety instead. Could cut it in, actually. I think it goes by the four. And eh, that camera angle tells me maybe not. So probably a safety. Down behind the nine ball with the cue ball? Yeah. And I think maybe if he had a little better direction with the kiss shot, meaning where the one's going to end up, cue ball's definitely going towards the bottom rail after he makes the four if he goes for that. And, and another thing is the good players recognize how simple this safety was but how difficult of a kick shot it's going to leave. This is not easy. Yeah, and I was going to say even as great as filler is, he had to really bend that ball. And when you have to bend the ball, Mark, you got to, you have to commit to a slower speed. I know you don't get as much you feel like when you hit the ball, uh, but you make contact a lot more often. Okay, he could set up uh, to shoot the two and do something with the 7-9. You know, I mean, some kind of way. He's got an open pocket for the three in many places. So drawn across the seven isn't the worst thing in the world. Does the seven go anywhere besides all the way up, Mark, by the six? Doesn't appear to. And yeah. that's why the, getting from the six to the seven is very difficult. You know, if the six was in a little handier position, I think he's going to flirt with trying to do something with the seven right now. 
I mean, he could wait till the three ball, but the ten's a big ball to block the four, right? So right. if he gets a little heavier right here on the two, I'm almost 100% he draws into these trying to glance. We'll see. He may still be doing that because he aims a little high and then comes down. No, he decided not to. So now I'm curious because not only getting from the six to the seven very difficult, but imagine getting good on the seven to get to the eight. Right? I mean, this is right, tough. Right. I mean, he can definitely drag into him here, but like you said, the 10 ball now gets in the way uh, quite often, and he doesn't want to take that type of chance. You can play a pre planned safety on the seven if you don't like it when you get there. It's not what you want to do, but sometimes it's the most prudent play rather than take risk of an unforced error early in the match. Yeah, I kind of felt like if you were going to risk it, it was on the two ball because it was very difficult to get bad on the three. You might not get a shot, but you're probably not getting snookered. So now I think he's got to, you know, just work like you said. Oh, he did, and he held it. That That's some confidence right there. And I think he saw that the future getting from the six to the seven to the eight was pretty slim. And, the, and you see how softly he went into it there, trying to minimize his risk with the ten ball and willing to accept if it doesn't completely dislodge the ball if he doesn't land heavy on the nine. Plus the slower speed allowed him much greater control. Yeah, and that was all about the 10, but anytime you're breaking balls out that are in the center of the table, just go practice how lightly you can dislodge two balls. You know, now when they're on the rail mark, it's different because you get a lot of double kisses and the balls wedge a little more. You have to bust those out a, with a little more speed maybe, but when they're in the center of the table, it doesn't take much. This is a funny shot. I mean, do you go back and forth and take an angle, you're trying to kill it here to the center maybe? Kill it to the center, I guess. Boy. Yeah, nice shot. <laughs> and he was still accelerating through impact there. Absolutely. Yeah. Total yeah. control. Yeah. That's where I said earlier, let the tip yeah. kill the ball, not your stroke. And that's what tip position is all about, making the ball speed up or making it slow down. There's so many different things you can do to the cue ball. And I noticed when I watch Efren play, he has little different pitches of the angle of the cue Absolutely. coming in the ball to Absolutely. create different effects. And then, like you said, there's the tip. Yeah, some you learn it consciously, right? But all those things, the bridge length and all that, for most players, become very instinctive things that you do. Uh, so you don't have to change your swing so much. You know, whether that be angle the cue, you shorten the bridge. Um, just like the backstroke, you know, when the pros are practicing, they're con consciously or subconsciously practicing that backstroke. Some, yeah. some guys are very aware of it, and then some guys are just like, okay, let me make sure it feels good. This is that dicey, iffy shot. You're straight in. You want to draw back. You also want to include a little bit of right-hand English to work the cue ball closer to the nine, but then that makes this shot missable, and you can also get enough squirt that you uh, – it, it dives off the eight a little to the right. I think that's where you're going with yes, it, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think he maybe straight draws in and accepts the distance on the, right. on the nine. That's the, that's the most accurate way to play it. And he's not one to really, you know, force it too often, right? Now, he may just let it loose and come back down close to the nine, right? I mean, that he way. Could, you, yeah, power yeah. draw yeah, exactly. out to the center. That way well, you, did, you get did past use, the ten, right? He did use the side spin there, Jeremy. Yeah. But he was hitting it with that harder speed to where if he went past the ten, he was going to have to make a little trickier shot, but he wasn't getting snookered. I like his thought there. And you can tell a little more time in this opening rack, right? Yeah, he wants to get off right. Uh, <laughs> Feller's nobody to joke around with. Gorst, listen to these TPAs he's played. Well, to, before you mention that, yeah. uh, to get back to a little slower here, I think he may be trying to sit Josh a little bit here early. And I mean, there's a little gamesmanship there. There's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. Quality you were saying opening TPAs, run out. Yeah, yeah here's Gorse sure, TPAs coming into this. He played a 949 against Ruiz, 945 against Appleton, 937 against Shaw. I've yeah. never seen three matches in a row played at that level on a 10 foot table. Well, you might have another never right here. Yeah. Win, win or lose for Fetter, I expect an over 900, really. I know. Does that sound crazy yeah. or not? I, yeah. By both guys, to here's, be honest with well, you. Well, here's Fillers. He played 943 against Kazakas, and Kazaka shot back. He had a 909 in that. Yeah. That's elite world class. And an 853 against Gomez, and then a 932 last night against Eminem. 
or earlier today, I should say. Good square break. And that's the speed that I said earlier that I like. In the last match, he picked it up, or, or let's say maybe didn't get the speed results but tried to get a little more into the rack. And uh, he may have another break and run if this two goes by. He started a lot of matches with a break and run. 19.8. It's two ball. I don't know. It I goes. guess it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he didn't try to even do anything. He was just willing to shoot. And he's on the correct side other than straight in. You'd rather be straight on half a pocket or whatever you want to call it. But if not, you're on the correct side. That way the automatic a little English on the object ball that helps that 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 point over there. Yeah. To accept the ball. That was not a full pocket. He had to go, but he had plenty of room. And he's in dead stroke. And he's in dead stroke. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> I spoke yesterday about his wife sits in the crowd. She's like his coach, and she'll be chanting, offense, offense, offense. <laughs> like, don't even think about playing safe here. Yeah, we I want wonder how often she says defense. <laughs> yeah. Probably not very often. <laughs> <laughs> she lost that play. Well, they're both real young. They'll learn that here in a few years. Uh, She's she, quite the player herself. And she might be the sweetest person I ever met. Well, you're pretty sweet now, Mark. Bring this yeah. I'm a nice guy, but not that nice. Okay, he's got the premium angle just to slide up the rail here to make it very natural, like standard. And just what we expected from these two <laughs> yeah. young, uh, you know, they call filler the killer, but they're both cold-blooded killers, these two. When it comes to the felt. Oh, 1-1 one, one is our score. First break and run out of the set. We got a time match. 1-1. One, one. Now forced to break. Yeah, you're not going to want to blink too much in this match here, especially with the lefty at the table. And Fetter gives you a few more. You know, a little more time to blink in between shots, but you're still not going to want to miss any of his action either. I mean, this is, uh, these are two that are going to be landmarks in the sport for the next 30 years. And I suspect they'll be able to play very well that long. Uh, both of them stay in really good shape. Yeah, the two smart, youngest guys. Smart players. Right, 21 and 24. Yeah. Hey, there's nobody here in the they're the best players, and all these other guys got, you know, 30, 40 years of high-level pool in. Yeah. These well. young guys train so disciplined. I tell you, it does, it should do wonders for some other guys as well, like a Shane Van Boning. I mean, these are the guys he wants to still win titles against as well. You know, not quite 40 years old. Was he 37 now, maybe? 38. Oh, is he 38? Okay. Both the balls right behind the one went in the side. That's what they, and then the, the well, that, look at that, four balls on the break. That speed's repeatable. And watch the next time he breaks, how much extension he gets through the cue ball, even at the lighter speed. But what a connection that was. Right before you came here, we had a break contest out here with a prize. And uh, Federer got second in that, but, but yet hit some just consistent, not the most powerful. There's... Uh, on balls made? No. Nope. On um, speed? Yes. Okay, see, look how th that's the fooler, right? 21.3. But if you just watched him do it, you wouldn't even think it was as hard as Josh's. So that tells you that he's accelerating right at impact the correct way and getting the most out of his swing. So that good timing, I guess that would be yeah. the very definition of timing, is that you're ex smoothly accelerating through impact so that yeah. you can. It's a constant, basically. Still hit the micro dot on the cue ball. Yeah, well, that's why, you know, everything with the greats are always labeled effortless because there's no exterior speed involved, really. It's just a mild motion, and the real speed's really, really uh, made right before impact or, like, releasing the ball when you're throwing a football or anything like that. And this guy does it real well. You commented maybe the best transition or the best back and front you've seen in maybe ever a long time. Yeah, I don't know. Steve Davis is the only other guy that comes to mind that looks like this. Ronnie's pretty good. His transition's pretty nice. His is, I mean, there's so many good words for his stroke that be yeah. better. They're very yeah. thorough <laughs> is the one that I comes to my mind all the time. Very thorough stroke. Just short is not ever going to be in the mix. Okay, he's got to pay attention here. Um, 
just to make sure he comes down with a good speed. He's going to use the second rail. And the reason why is it could get kind of funny straight as drawn towards the side. I think he did real well myself, but some, yeah. sometimes you fall in that area where, man, I'm drawn right towards this side. You know, you might have to go top inside instead just to stay away from a big error. But this I think has got okay. the hint of angle that leads just above the side pocket. Which there. is excellent, so. yeah. Now, you know, you don't see it very often these days. Um, there's a few player, good players back in Texas that aim high and then come down for the draw stroke. I thought about it a lot of times because, you know, teaching and stuff, but it's a great way to not have an early elbow drop, I'll tell you that. Uh, I don't know if that's yeah. a conscious I thing never or not. Of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. because you're never, ever coming up. You're always descending down, right? Right. Gorse retaliates with a break and run out of his own and regains the lead two to one. He has a one game lead. Yeah, has there been any mistakes? I mean, we missed a kick shot that was super tough by Filler, but. Let's see. Through uh, three games, I mean, it's been a safety, perfect safety for Fetter after the break. Yeah. And then a run out, and then Josh with a break and run, and now Fetter returns the, the favor. The the safety that uh, Fedor played in, was it the opening rack? Is that right? No. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. opening rack. He clipped um, the one and, and cut him off in a okay. lot of ways. You and know. then uh, Fetter tried to two rail it, but then you want to hit it harder to get separation there, but yeah. then if you do, it takes the time to, for the ball to bend yeah. out. So. And it's hard to commit to that lighter. I see it by the greatest players in the Moscone every year. Every year they, they know they got to hit it lighter on that super slick table. And when you're out there, it's just hard to pull the trigger at that speed. You just that's, that, that's why kicking is important to practice. Uh, because if you practice it, you start to trust that, oh, I'm going to do all right here. The problem with practicing it, especially for the Moscone Cup, is that you're not often on that type of equipment. You can't duplicate the table, yeah. It's so slippery, you know, yeah. and you usually are practicing on broken cloth, in which case you can do a lot of different things. I used to do it for hours, though, I ain't going to lie. Just throw balls out there and kick at them and safety myself, kick at them. I used to see Efren do that a lot, actually. All right. Looks <laughs> like... Uh, uh, got a little off the wrong side of the five here. So, of course, he's got all this power. So I don't know if he plays for a whole lot of angle here on the six or not. Might play for it to go underneath the eight and nine. Yeah, it looks like he has that two rail angle here. Yeah, and the thing about the ten footer, right, like say if you get a little funny on this, right, like he's going to end up short. He's going to end up short but flat. But the ten isn't. You know, you got more room to go beside the 10. That's the one benefit of the 10-footer in situations like this. You don't fear hitting the 10 as much because you can get to the side rail a lot easier. Look at that. The nice rail, speed. Excuse me. Look at that speed control. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's good. Ooh. Ooh, maybe not for. Thin. Look at this yeah. monitor here. Ooh, that's pretty thin. A lot of cue ball movement. Does he float it, Mark? Does he kill it with a little bottom well, English? He's kind of queuing downward, but I think he should float it. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking to see about killing it. Did you see how he pumped the cue a little bit right there? Right. He's going to use his extension. I think he needs the bridge with the extension. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to say, did, did he grow a foot be between the semifinal and the final? Okay, so that tells me he's going to try and cue the ball with a little English maybe or power up. And look at the form. He's trying, he, he he's trying to do a Corey like duel a little bit, huh? Now he's jettisoning this extension and going to a much longer extension. Okay. Now the one thing, Filler's so good, he can roll this in and get really above where the bridge is at and be okay on the nine. So decisions here early. He's going to try and spin it. Just, a, a, just a hair. Oh, look at this. Wow. Too hard. This is going to fall on the rail. A bit thin, Mark, but what a great shot. Whew. Is it easy to hold on the good side of the 10? Hmm. You don't want to have to hit it that easy from this angle and that speed, but uh, maybe he can. I think he does. A little short. Well, the thing is, you don't want to have to warp it to try and get back no. up in it. You could scratch easily in the corner. Yeah, you can make it scratch. You can make it not scratch. 
Oh, he used the pocket big time. What a result. World class shot there. And really his stroke really opened up the pocket on the nine there. He hit it way to the bottom rail there. Good job there, Josh Filler. How about that, folks, for a start after four racks. Another break and run from Filler. Heading into rack five. We're all tied up 2-2. Two -two. And Gorse will have the break. That's something. We are playing on 860 Simonis. They're using Duramuth, Aramuth balls, along with the diamond, new diamond cue ball. Everybody seems to love that ball. It seems like I hit some balls again last night with it more than I have the entire trip, and it seemed like it played pretty nice. It seems like the material may be a little harder than the Aramuth, maybe, um, but I liked it. Had a nice rollout to it. It you know, got through the object ball pretty nice, uh, where you see some balls that kind of bounce a little bit off the object balls a little more. Okay, and watch his extension through, and he's not really even unloading on him. But that. No, he hit a 25 in the break contest earlier. Yeah. But he still want to carry that cue out to the first diamond, maybe a hair further towards the side. A little less than that time, but huh. nice result. If that one chips up off the end rail, there it is, and we're going to see the bridge again. But he's definitely going to attack, I believe. Definitely happy to have this shot. I yeah, the cue ball naturally leads between uh, six and seven here. Yeah, I wonder if he. It's pretty thin with the bridge. I wonder if cueing this with right English to come down the clear side of the table for the two on the side is any kind of option. I think your shot's better because it looks very natural. I think he can handle the speed. Right, the line the bridge is on, right? Kind of? Yes. Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It leads there naturally. Then it's yeah. just a matter of rationing out the speed properly. Yeah, and what he'll want to do is, you know, he might, this one here, you don't get quite as much, uh, the throw doesn't work as much, let's say that. It, it will still work, but. He's going to have to aim a little thinner than he thinks. Or. Now, this is what makes this shot tricky is do you see how far his tip is from the cue ball? He's four inches away, so your timing of your stroke is never as good, and that hampers your speed control. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. The throw doesn't work quite as well, so you need to aim a little more natural. Well, Boy. that's a beauty. Excellent. He might, he might be for the side. Jeez. Couldn't hardly hit it any better. And then <laughs> still didn't he fall awkwardly on the two. Yeah, this will be fun to watch here. He's going to have to really move the cue ball for the corner. I think he takes on the side just because there's so much guarantee getting shape on the three. If you cut it in the side, it would draw. Now he's looking to go three rails off the two. I think the three layer makes that uh, ball pocketing a little bit easier. Well, it's easier for sure. And I guess he can pull the ball. He's got to pull it fairly deep here. Not, not too deep, maybe just a little past the middle diamond, middle diamond, yes. something like that. Yeah, with running English, you come right on around the nine. Even if you lightly bump the nine, unless you hit it dead square, you're going to be okay. Yeah, just don't under hit. That's what Mark's saying. He can bump the nine on a little hit here. Smooth. Uh, yeah, good. Conservative. Yeah, he nice. made sure there was no issue. Nice. And again, can't tell you enough. What, did you see how far the cue ball moved? But it was never really going that fast, was it? Right. That's, that's what you'll see with the top players. Uh, really trust the roll of the ball. Some of us try to work the cue ball closer on that shot rather than play conservative like uh, Fedor just did. And you just got to be able to make these shots. And It's not the shot that you would love to play. It's just the shot that you have to play to aid consistency. Yeah, and I wonder if he's gone two rails around or just one rail inside the 10 I think it's two rails around. I think he's no, rolling. No, two yeah, rows around. around. And it, he didn't put much spin on it now, so he's going to have to draw out of this, which is fine. Or is he looking to stun two rails by it? Looks like it. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. He definitely it, likes the stun. And I think he didn't want to do anything more with that previous ball. And Just I think keep the, it simple, the, huh? the speed that he played it made it feel like he could pocket it more freely. And then he'll play from here if he has to. Yeah, and the, talk about it all the time. Do I want to do a little more here, or do I want to work a little more on the next shot? And he's definitely not past working. We all know that. Yeah, he's not afraid of work. 
He works through these racks. Look how smooth he got past the 10 there. Yeah, trusting to roll the ball again. And there's a, another economy of travel of the cue ball. You'd like to get the cue ball closer, but it wasn't laying for that. So he just let the cue ball go here and be a shot maker and make this mid-range shot. Yeah, straight in on the six would have been great, but that's threatening getting behind the nine, and there's no reason for that. That's twice now. He's played a little bit longer position than he would have maybe been comfortable, most comfortable playing. And I still see him taking a hair more time, and I think it very deliberate. Well, I don't think it's intentional. I think it's how the difficulty of these ball arrangements is what's slowing him down. He wants to make sure he doesn't give up an unforced air from not being fully prepared to shoot. Hits the heart of the pocket again. Yeah. He's all right. Going to have to take on the corner most likely. It Could no. run the ball. Well, he he wasn't planning. He he wasn't planning on playing it down the corner. But, but he knew that, that was, was part possible. Of it. Yeah. Right, if you overhead it. Okay, this plays pretty nice. You can catch a little bit of the side rail and still make the ball because he's got enough angle to move it. He's not going to jam this one. Oh, man. And he did kind of hit at it a little more than I thought he would. Thought he could hit that a little lighter, still get plenty of draw on the ball. Of course, he missed his mark, so that's how that goes. You got to smooth this around rail first, or are you playing ball first here, Mark? Mm -hmm. If you go rail first, you got to use straight top spin because if you hit that heavy with a little side spin, you can be into the 10 pretty easy. Oh, he didn't even bother with that. Yeah, I thought that was a little tough, but he got to the cut s s spot, you know, and the nine's over the side, so he's going here. Two cushion position play here for the side pocket. Yeah. Don't, don't oh, think no, he he's, catches this. He's, he's going downward on the ball. He's not made up his mind. Well, I thought. Was he thinking, like, pulling it uh, outside? Yeah. yeah, I think he was trying to hold it for two cushions. Well, I don't know. Up that, and down, I think, here all day, right? Well, the reason is that it makes the ball pocketing a little freer. But With spin, you mean? No, high. He's putting spin. Yeah. Oh, no, he didn't. He just put straight high. Oh, boy, he's this not happy with the speed on this at all. Yeah, he's going to he get was, thin here. Well, whew. You, I, I bump the 10 a little, yeah, huh? Yeah, you're I going mean, right at it. Yeah, I mean, you could go by it, four rails. I mean, that is there. You'd then have you to elevate the center yeah. ball. You know, you'd have to hit down on it for sure, but I think bumping the 10 is okay. Yeah, he's not committed. That's distracting as could be because how you hit that 10 really dictates what kind of shot you get. I think you just got to know you're hitting the 10 and play speed here. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, oh. and, and that's the thing. You either play soft or you play firm. You just don't play in between to where the 10 could end up on the side rail if you catch half of it or something like that. You go one way or the other. That was a great decision. I like the way Josh got back up off it because now he's made a good shot and it's a little bit of a recovery. He just wants to make sure he gets his 10 ball down. That'll be his first lead in the match there, three games to two. Yeah, and in straight. rack five, Filler takes his first lead, three to two, and he'll be breaking. Yeah, we'll get a get a replay of Fetter's miss on the seven there before Filler breaks the balls. Yeah, just caught a little more of that, about an inch up from the point. Rattled here on the big foot, ten, ten foot. All right, nice speed there. It's like the ones eight, coming down eight, here by the cue eight ball. And the five are going to get real ugly. Whew. Well, he's got to roll out by the four. He's going to maybe have to mass a or kick to do so. Can't roll out to the cut of any sort here. Could roll out by the two maybe for some type of tricky kick shot. Hmm. Yeah, this is not a fun shot to play. No, he may have to go off the three or another ball to get towards the four here just because he might be blocked by the 
Well, maybe he can even do something productive with a three. Yeah, he was trying to. Yeah, that was and pretty heady play. He could get this one back, of course. This is difficult. It is, but I think that bank is aided by the four. At least it enti it's enticing. You hate to give it back to Filler because you know he'll shoot at it. Yeah, I, thought, I think it's an easy return, though. And I think Filler knew he was probably always getting this back, but what, ex what else are you going to do? I mean, you can't roll out to where Fetter can cut this ball in. So he's got to edge it and run the cue ball and take some chances. The good thing is the two is going to help him out. He caught the point. Now Fetter might shoot the combo. But if he got the ball all the way down there, it might have been hard to shoot that one-two combo, yeah. right? He caught the point right there. So, you know, good effort from Filler. And I think a correct decision from, from Fetter. Now this this one's going to go away, and you can't really move the cue ball much, Mark. So you just take your medicine and see if you develop a shot here. I mean, if you try to hit it hard to really make the one move, you can miss the two. And the one ball is going towards the five. Uh, a lot of the time that you make the two, if you hit it really pure, he's going to try and pure it. I think. Oh, he hit it really pure. He hit it to the full side. He didn't <laughs> let the one cut the two much. That was a lot better shot than he may get credit for. That took good courage to shoot. Now, you know, do you take a chance and develop the five here? By I would. The, okay. I would. And, and, you know, you can go into here with a top right, right? And real or, controlled. You're not going to. Well, you go rail the, first and kick it out, right? And you're going to kill the cue ball with the right English. Yeah. You should move the five across the eight here and have a nice shot on the three. Right. Right. No matter what, you're protecting yourself, so you always have the shot on the three. Even the five's going to go over there by the first diamond and the on thing, the long rail. Yeah, and the thing is, it's just hard to get on the three to get to the five. And so right. he may figure something else out. Can he overcut the one dramatically here and get the cue ball movement by the five? Like that. Oh. But see, it's yeah. still very difficult to get to the, to the five. Oh, well, he's got the four. I didn't see the four hanging. I was thinking three to the five, Mark. Were you doing the same? I was. Yeah. Pardon us. <laughs> I guess he was standing in the way. I didn't even that see the four ball. That lonely old four up there. <laughs> it's dark color. Yeah. Excuse us. I suppose had the five ball been next, he would have played our Moved shot. Moved it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he just wants to thinly clip this seven if he's going to clip it at all. He's got to be careful. Nice and smooth. Yeah, like that. Because if you go hard... You can hit it fat and drag down the rail, catch the point, maybe get straight in, even scratch, believe it or not, on the slick table. This is a shot that plays easiest if you go two rails rather than one because of the, well, you can go real thin too, but you don't want to be on the rail, so you take that out by going to the second rail and coming at the five. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I don't think he got it exactly where he wanted. I, did, I don't think there was any reason to be this thin on something on the five. But he's going to probably go to straight in now, straight in-ish on the seven. He, I think he wanted the cue ball six or seven inches maybe towards that corner pocket just to be a little heavier on the five, but he should be fine. And pardon us because these guys rarely ever make any mistakes, so. Let you know when they're just a little bit out of line. All right, he's falling underneath this. So now. A little more work. But yeah, he can't cheat that enough. Uh, maybe he can to pull back, but. That nine's in right in the. It's close. Yeah, yeah, real close. And the thing is, he's close to it. It's You can still generate that top English power around, right? But if you jam it, it doesn't really create much power you almost have to still smooth it around the table with the top and a little bit of right and be short no it's good you just got to trust it rolling in there oh, that's real good because it just doesn't gain the character on that full hit if you really <laughs> uh, hit at it right it just kind of stalls the ball more than anything and i'll tell you man 21 maybe the one of the best I've ever seen at a young age to have a complete, you know, <laughs> when it comes to knowledge. Now, he doesn't know all the shots. He'll tell you that. We, none of us do. But the composure and the well, tenacity. And, and, and pretty knowledgeable as far as, like, 
understanding what's happened physically with the pool balls and what it takes to move the ball around and still to be able to call on it under the big pressure. You know, we all lose our heads sometimes. This guy doesn't seem like he loses it very often. He's mature beyond his years for sure in terms of pool life. And he's returned to, you know, again, filler, no matter who you are, you don't want to get down two, three games, Man. four games. This is great playing. Get up again after rack six, three, three. He'll be breaking in rack seven. Just great pool. Yeah, when Gorse played his first set, and I was talking about 949, I was gushing how great that is, and now look at it, he's played three more sets after that, up at that same clip. I've never witnessed anything like that on a 10-foot table. Seldom on a 9-foot table. Yeah, I mean, he's probably, oh, I mean, uh, probably out of the field. Let me think. There's four guys maybe that you think could have multiple matches uh, above that number. You know, two of them here in the finals, maybe Shaw and SVB otherwise. Yeah. No, don't take anything away from the other guys. They could certainly do it too. But if you're going to pick out maybe four guys in the event that you feel like could do that multiple times, and now he's on his fourth, uh, trying to do his fourth at, the, at that number. He's got a real chance to average over 940 for the tournament. <laughs> That's just, I, I can't even conceive of that. Oh, great connection there. The five ball down. A little more travel on the one. Got an ugly kiss. He was, yeah, yeah he points out he had it parked there and he would have had a great shot instead. Got kissed off to the side. But boy, he tagged the break square. 21.4. Doesn't want to take a chance at the spin shot here. It is there. Going a little bit like rail first. He's going to roll out. Yeah. Technician. Doesn't want to fool with the two. It's already a little funny with the three up table, right? So you you wouldn't want to move that. That's already helping you if you have to roll out a bit. Now Filler probably doesn't pass this. Hmm. He, I think he tries to create from here, maybe. Can't blame him because if you hit the uh, seven, outside right? of the seven, there's a chance that cue ball trickles onto the right angle for the two. Yeah. He's passing it back. Boy, he had to pull on some reins there, didn't yeah. he? Not to shoot yeah, this. it was grudging. He gritted his teeth and said, yeah. go ahead and shoot it, but yeah. I hate letting you shoot it. Well, the other thing is, I didn't necessarily mean offense. Can't you bank the one around the seven with a high ball here and drag the cue ball maybe into the three or over by the four nine and let the th one come down below the two eight? Well, you, you can, but also the speed, it can get away from you easy, yeah, too. Yeah, but you got a lot of balls. If that cue ball with the high English kind of hydraulics to the left, you're going to be okay. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, see, like this. You There's so it. many balls there. I mean, you he's going to give up a little bit of a shot, but I think percentages were on his side. Now, I do think he hit it a little thinner than he wanted because the cue ball came off kind of hot yep. going that direction, right? But, but it wasn't a terrible, terrible play. Definitely had an opportunity. And he didn't have a choice. He's I shooting. Mean, he push out. Think of All right. Is he going to get a backdoor safety here? Nay, nay. No, doesn't look like it. No, he's got a couple choices. He can go rail first for sure and might be able to go ball first. The swerve is is not terrible either. You get a good feeling because you can hit the one a bunch of different ways on the left side, then the left English is going to carry you for the mm -hmm. two in the upper corner, right? So not sure the two passes the... Well, it's definitely a swerve. Look at the elevation yeah, that, here. That's the one you feel better about, and you can move it for the side if you really feel good about it, like this. Because the table's so open, right, on that side yeah. of the table, like you don't fear getting anything terrible happening. Fetter gets up at 7 in the morning, does a physical workout, and then begins his pool day, which is a 10-hour day of focus pool, not just 10 hours. Yeah, probably with the hours you got to keep here, it's a little different. But when he's back home in Moscow preparing to win these huge events, he, he puts in a ton of time uh, making himself better in every way. And I do think, you know, Federer's got this going exactly how he wants. I know it's 3-3. He'd love to be up a game or two, but, you know, 
if you roll, I mean, like to break and run out, but you want to win games against Filler. Maybe, maybe a little psyche. You know, you're winning when he passes a rollout. You're winning, you know, when he takes mm -hmm. on a rollout. You know, you're winning different ways and 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 uh, and sitting him down a lot. I th you know, I I see a little more time taken myself. Pretty routine here. Just a little pinch on the cue ball. Anytime you want to hold the ball off of an angle. Now, he may be going forward for the side. I don't know. But generally, it's straight low English. No side spin. Nice shot. And that's the difference, right, Mark? Like a lot of lesser players would say, I don't want this six ball. I want to shoot the four and get an easier shot. Yeah. And that's just the the difference between this guy and, and a lot of pros. This is a lot like playing the game ball right here. You know the seven's over the pocket, but you still need to play the cue ball for a specific place. It's not just get that six in because that's not how you approach any of these other shots, and that's, what constant, that's when we miss on this yeah, type of a shot. Exactly. When you get a little more detailed, so does your Q-tip and everything else. Everything stays in place. You know, Fetter's his own guy, but he's a combination of a lot of great players in my mind. I see a little Albin Ocean in him at times when he's looking at the table, and but definitely his own guy. And he's not egotistical. He's very down to earth, but oh, yet very absolutely. confident. You know, yeah. when when he gets done practicing, he'll he'll say to his partner and say sometimes like, "I can't lose," but it's not an egotistical thing. He's feeling that good about his playing. Yeah. You know, so you have to understand there's a distinction. It's not just bravado. He, and then he comes out here, and this is how he performs. We got a little off angle here. Yeah, I would label him, you know, without – I didn't grow up with Federer, that's for sure, but as a mild introvert, you know, and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, a guy that really pays attention, but you you may not know it all the time. He, he displays he pays attention, though that's easy to see when he's playing pool, but – but uh, which which – to me, I see the guys that are like that get a lot done. All right. Does he force it here with a top English? I think if he goes top, it'll be a little check left. Seems that's to the straighten shot. it up. Yeah, nope. I was going to say maybe oh, the corner because he did get awkward. Yeah, that's way better there. Look at yeah. the economy of power. So it makes the pocket play big and gives you a lot of control because it's a shorter swing. And now it's two stop shots. Yeah, well, the swing itself will tell you that if you just watched him swing the cue, that'd tell you, yeah, that shot probably made sense, even if you didn't see the outcome of the shot, <laughs> just because of how calm he is through impact and everything else. So that's good decisions when you get to swing the cue like that. We got a pool match going on here. 4 3. And Filler will have the break. Three lead changes early, I think, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, here we go with the nine ball rack track. Yeah, you can see three lead changes already in this match. Eight and nine right behind the one. Dang, how quick did Filler rack the balls right there? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Now he missed the one a little bit. Anytime the one ends up on the end rail, definitely a mark that will tell you they missed the one a little because they're setting up to break to where the one ends up over the corner. So say right there, he broke from the right, he came across it on the left side. I think it was the opposite there, actually. He broke from the left and it came across from the right, but. Yeah. You gotta be careful on these rollouts. I mean, this is just kind of like bank the one towards the five a little bit and try and stall the cue ball with a little high left. Not like a hydraulic, but just a nice full hit. Yeah, you uh, you got to be careful here because uh, you can't just push out casually to the yeah. likes of Fedor. And he can cue the ball nicely. You really put yourself in a hole when you do yeah. that. Cue ball going behind the four, is it? Stayed nice and heavy, trying to use the four to stop the ball. <laughs> and he's got wow. all kinds of three-way covers. On, I mean, that was a great hit. The execution was fine, but that was really set up to, to, yeah. to be successful. And it came from a, a rollout that... I'll, I'll be honest, Filler didn't take much time on. No, that was sloppy. Yeah, and, and not something, you know, not only him, but anybody can afford playing this guy. 
Okay, not a whole lot here, so probably kicks pretty firm. Oh, he's going soft. That's a hard way to judge it. I understand the theory of it, and he may have gotten a little fortunate here uh, that he wanted to lay on top of it, right? But let's see what Fetter does here. Is he going to shave the one and come across? Usually Don't you, you think? I mean, I mean, usually you would do that. I don't mean, know if we got time to get the overhead, but if we do, you can just go over there behind the two, you know, ball in hand. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to leave a oh, one-rail kick now. The thing about the one-rail kick as well, there's other balls there, and Filler's going to be a favorite to hit it, unless he pushes this one by the five somehow, which I don't see how he's going to do that. Oh, he tried to, and he's going to give it up. Not going to like this. And that was trying to get so more out of the shot. He was trying to really make the one very funny. Now he's going to pay the price. <laughs> Big one, too. Well, this is the kick I was telling you about, though. Anytime you're kicking long rail and you got that cluster there, you got a lot of good things that can happen. It doesn't look like it's a natural angle to kick long rail. You're going to uh, have to. Well. I think it's okay. Maybe a touch of spin. Spin may not hurt you, though, Mark. You know, you come in from a different angle, right? Very hard to get underneath it without a rail, so you actually have some good things that can happen. True that, but you still have to judge how much spins when it gets to the end rail and you're eight and a half feet away. But yes, you can have something good because the cue ball, if you, especially if you go light rail first, you can go right into the five with exactly. the cue ball. Ball first, you can go into the five as well because you're coming in at that angle we talked about. So I expect some good things here, actually. Wow. Got yeah, it. Kept him off. Yeah. Well, maybe not. But that <laughs> just, that's a good hit anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Banks, it's okay to draw out for the two, you know, in the corner by the three if he if he knows the shot. It's not bad at all. You just draw right by the six to the open area by the t a little below the ten. Looks to me he's going to take the safety. Just going to pin the cue ball to the back of the five? No. Nice. Yeah, he tried to do that. His Think speed was off. Things are a little off for Josh right yeah. now. And Interesting. He's looking at the cut just because he feels good about the pocket. He's playing <laughs> yeah. great. Hey, this is a, a, a egregious mistake here. And it's barely, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're stunned when, oh, he almost hit a bad shot. He's measuring up if the scratch cross side. How possible is that if I dice this one in the corner? Because I think he wants to shoot here. Be cold if he cut it in and come across and scratch. I think he might catch a piece of the 10. We'll see. I don't think there's a scratch in the side, really, if he hits it towards the pocket. If he hits a good, right. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a scratch there. If he hits a good. He might hit the point and really... Help him out with a cue ball. Now, when you shoot this kind of shot, this is where you really like that medium speed to pocket the ball. Nothing heavy, nothing light. Got to keep your head super still. Slow back, finish, stayed still. Oh, there's oh, that cold scratch. Blooded, yeah. Cold blooded. And he yeah. knew it. He checked it. He just felt like he would probably get an edge of the 10 ball. Maybe even hit the one too clean to the pocket, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, he hit it sweet. Pool players, they always, I hit it too good. See this, now Josh, this is different. He stuns over into that angle he wants. I roll the two in the side for the angle I want. It's just preference, right, with ball in hand. That was a great shot on a 10-foot table, though, to scratch. So Josh here won't get too, too close to his work with the top inside. He'll get decent, though, a little above the middle diamond. He'll hold the angle to move naturally for the five, though, I think. I think Josh having a little talk with himself right there. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. after a couple of mistakes, he took a little more time on that ball. It's not a pretty routine shot for himself. Okay, he's going to need a little bounce. He got it. Now, this is where you got to make a decision. Does he draw over for the side? I've seen him do that plenty. He'll just go below the six to the side rail and over. You go follow here. It's up to you. But Josh will do this much more. He doesn't want to take a chance. 
like this. He doesn't want to take a chance at coming a little long and funny with those other balls in the center of the table. But he is off a little bit. You saw him raise his hand right there. Yep. He's got a little awkward angle into the side, so he won't be able to get close to the eight. Yeah, he's got to mm -hmm. really power up to do that. I think he's just going to roll forward and bounce back out and just shoot the long. I mean, my goodness. Offense, offense. Just play. Everything else means you got to take more risk to maybe not get that much more yield. Yeah, and that is the one thing about the side pockets. You know, when you're off a little bit, it can, can become funny quickly, right? He was winding up to go three rails. Oh, he's banking it? No, I think he's going to power up. No, he rolled it. He rolled it, okay. Yeah. Looked like he had adjusted his aim when he got back up off the ball. And this is the shot. If he misses this, he misses it. But yeah. this is the place to go down, not yeah, playing position. And lose shooting shot. Oh, oh, he might have four railed it here. And he this never did close. like it. This is close. It's going to get up a little bit. It's going to still give up a shot. And it's just like more than the miss. Uh, to me, if, if I'm just a little concerned. He's just a little off period you know like it's like uh, mm -hmm. you know he took a little time wondering like i said maybe he had a little talk with himself after that mistake uh earlier and so we'll see what happens from here but josh filler is human so he's got to maybe take a time out maybe yeah that'd be a good time to do it i, I don't know who broke this last track okay Where's he going? Is he going near the side at all? I think he's going behind the side. Okay. Because he's queuing a hair left. Is he going into the 10 maybe? Uh, he rarely does stuff like that. Oh, what a nice hit to go inside the 10 like that. That's Good where shot. he needed a little more of that high ball and just a, just a little touch of that outside to make sure he gets inside the 10. How he, good is Fetter playing? Especially if he gets this nine ball down and gets on the 10. Even his scratch, he made a heck of a shot to scratch. Uh, he'll come down with the tip, it looks like. Boy. Real good stuff. Five, five to three now, Gorse in front. And Gorse now opens up a two-game oh. lead, five to three. Yeah, it'll be Fetters' we break as well. Nine. Gorse will have the break. And we talked about it in Josh's last match. I don't think he's trailed. And here's our TPA. He's at 942 for Gorst with only three mistakes and 49 balls pocketed. 30 balls pocketed with six mistakes and the 833 for the German, Josh Filler. <laughs> Gorst is powering up, putting the heat on his opponent. Yeah. Well, getting and, out when he's supposed to. What I was saying at the last match that I think we commented that I don't think Filler has trailed in any match so far. So new territory in this tournament. And a guy that rarely loses in the finals. You know, he's yeah. he may be not, yeah. you know, you could pick some other players that run deeper, cons a little more consistently, but he wins a little more often, especially in these yeah. situations. So. I can't even remember the last tournament that uh, Filler got second. Yeah, right. The other part of it is that Filler has three wins so far, two of them breaking run out. So he hasn't won much when he had. When they both shoot. Right? Yeah. And that tells you a little bit about that brain of the 21 year old Fetter course. But, you know, we saw it in a couple other matches, maybe a, a few lackluster rollouts, right? That that hurt. That it rollout did. hurt earlier. It did. That, that pinned him up pretty now, good. Look, look at how those balls opened up there nicely. Again, uh, the cue ball stopped. 19-8 again, I'm guessing, somewhere around there. 21-6. <laughs> oh, wow. He really got the connection there. And, and again, it, it's a fooler because, you know, he starts so mild on the downswing yeah. and creates the acceleration. You know, it looks at more effortless than the power he really creates an impact. You couldn't have hit the cue ball any purer. It didn't have any hint of side spin, and look where it stopped, right where he started from. Okay, he's going to want to gain the angle, it looks like. And this is what a lot of people would say, why wouldn't he get straight on the two? Because that doesn't agree with the one. So now he's going to come to the center of the table and shoot the two and wrap around the six to get to the three, I believe. So it's a lot of times what the ball wants to do. He could try to take the chance to get straight in, Mark. But if you don't get there, you could get really kind of dead where you're not going to get there at all. Now yeah. he can stun two rails around the six. Uh, he may even be able to go with a straight high ball, one rail between the 6-9, huh? 
I mean, that is an option, even though I do think he likes the stun. Yeah, so, I think the, the stun has just a little higher yield out of it. Well, he likes shooting it that way anyways, right? I mean, right. it's like shooting the money ball, <laughs> you know, right here. They just, mm -hmm. you know, quarter tip of left English, half a tip below center maybe, not even, and just let the ball roll out on you. As soon as you get by the six, you're pretty home free. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> and I can't express more to people learning patterns and want to know correct patterns on how he looked at the one ball to get on the two. Not how he wanted to get on the two, but what the one offered. And, and that made total sense. So it's a lot more about what it wants to do, Mark, than what you want to make it do. He, he got a little straight, and now he's looking at the five in the long corner pocket. If it hadn't gotten quite so straight, he could have maneuvered. But it looks like he can cheat this to the rail and yeah. draw back for the to the rail for the five in the side. I'm sitting I, right on this line here. It is really, it's really it's a hint the wrong way, but only a hint. You can't jam. Well, he doesn't want to freeze the ball on the rail though. So I mean, when he shoots the five, he wants a little bit of air on the cue ball. Yeah. And so now. Key to this shot is don't let up. You know, the guys that hit this pure, they put a hair more speed on this ball than you think. A big time shot coming here. Yeah, and even though he's on the rail, so when you're on the rail, you have a much shorter backswing, right? But watch how he still follows through. That's the key. He doesn't let the short backswing make him go short forward. Uh, pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous shot. Good composure. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, when I see him shoot those shots, it's like he totally relies on his practice, the reps, the mm -hmm. thousands of shots that he shot before, and he just gets down and does his business. Now, is this just straight top spin with a, maybe a hint of right I, to it get It looks to like the to me, yeah, it looks like top inside is really kind of, kind of going a little too far with oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was I, thinking more try to stun around, but that's so much harder. No, I think it. A tip of right gets you nice and yeah. not even a tip of right. If you can float. And listen, these guys, right, you broaden. You just go all the way past the side here if you're worried about it, and then you're okay anyways. You don't have to get the exact line, right? Just go ahead and get on up table a little bit. You'll be fine. Nice shot there. He's got it on a string. <laughs> nice shot there. Now he's on the right side, so he doesn't have to deal with the 10 ball and the 9 ball shot. Yeah, and he's putting a lot of pressure on Joshua Filler. And Josh wants that. Josh doesn't want any cupcakes. You can go ask him. He wants to beat the best. Big part of it. This will be the third break and run out of the set for Gorst. Yeah, now. Up over 950. And climbing. So, Dorst opens up a three game lead now. We head into rack 10. Filler will have the break. Yeah, very uncharted territories for this event so far for Filler, right? Right. I mean,. But you're never going to win a big event unless you get tested along the way. So oh, absolutely. Happened here, I absolutely, guess. Absolutely, you know. You know, that's how great he is, is he took the test away from a few of those matches. Uh, yeah, this, I was, all right, got a ball down. And a shot. It looks like a good shot. Whew. The three doesn't pass the six. That's the only issue I see is doing something on the three. It looks awfully tight. He's not taking much time, though, so he must not mind the three ball too much. Man, he's on the wrong side of the two. He can go to the rail and out. And like I said, the three just must play. Oh, he's just got a nice touch. He's got nice and heavy here on the three, and that's what you want when you're shooting a tight one. Ooh. <laughs> this is definitely missable. Good shot. Yeah, and a bunch of kind of throw-ins from here for these guys with the seven over the side, the eight very near, six near the pocket. 
and he's in perfect line. So just what the doctor ordered for filler here, Mark? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he needed that. As great as he is, he needed to put one on his side. Yeah, I think it's, uh, this gets a little rhythm back for Josh. Yeah, and, you know, after it seems like it's been a lot of gorse, and it has, with this break and run, he's really technically only one break of serve down. Now, now that he draws it to six to four, he's got to win one on Fetter's break. That's obvious, but only one. Six four is our score. Both players now with three breaking run outs in this set. Yeah, and it's been a, a few minutes since we got to see Filler fire a 10 ball in. We talked about that earlier. No slow roll on them 10 balls usually. Gorst is now going to take a player timeout. I like this. Yeah. Use absolutely. it now. We're take a quick yeah. break, or will we come back? Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Well, I got to use the restroom. It's, it's a feeling. Hey, sometimes it's just a feeling. Now's the time to take my timeout. All right, everybody, we're going to be right back after this short player timeout. All right, Gorst is ready to break. He's leading 6-4. Yeah, both players go doing ahead, great. Mark. I was just going to say both players have broken ran three times. Yeah, and that's the break is what I was going to bring up. It seems Fetter's dialed in. Um, his first break wasn't his best, but after that, he's been pretty solid. So a two-game lead to me looks pretty big at this moment, even though we do know it could change quickly. But we're approaching over halfway. A little off that time. The five ball rattled, and now as soon as I bring it up, a dry break. Is the four going to help him? Maybe so. No, but the thin cut on the one. Two's yeah. on the other end. And the three is a real problem. But the three might help him. You know, the three might help him slow the cue ball down. Uh, oh, if he just yeah, rolls. Yeah, yeah, and even even more than a roll. Like, a, he can shoot a little bit of speed and come into the backside of the three. Um, normally, yeah. when you hit, see how many balls are on one side of the table, and that's from a little off on the hit on the one. Uh, I don't know how it happens. I've done it so many times when I used to practice it. I'm like, man, how's they all end up on this side, it seems like. What is he looking at now? <laughs> Thank is you. He, well, maybe bank safe, the one over by the 10-ish and try and move the cue ball a little bit. That's the only thing I could figure. Don't think he would go for the bank shot. That's no, look at the four. He's putting, his tip. He's putting yeah. his tip over there where he wants it. Maybe he figures to get past the three this way. Just kind of guide it a little bit, you know. Ooh. <laughs> okay, he'll... Let's yeah, see this, what he's got here. Yeah, this is, this is a funny arrangement here. Can he edge this and run the cue ball, or is that just too thin? That looks too thin. Yeah, he's way behind the one. Yeah, very chance of scratching coming off the left side of the one. Yeah, now he's looking to see what kind of movement he gets on the one if he plays it off the 10 some kind of way. Is he looking to just roll this, keep the one on the eight, and let the cue ball go by the eight, maybe trying to – you know, kind of toggle the balls together, mm -hmm. get a little bit of a snooker. The five's hanging though, so dangerous. Everything here is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what I would do here. I, I might draw off the bottom of the one, two rails, and try and swing the cue ball towards the seven. Can That's, we grab the overhead yeah. real quick? I guess we can't get the over. Oh, there it is. Okay, can he just shoot the one here and here and just let the cue ball I don't filter? Know if he can get to that side that of it. way. Yeah, I think that he may be looking at that. Let's see how he's cueing. Yeah, he's drawing off the bottom of it, bringing the cue ball back behind the seven, hoping the one goes into the eight. I think, anyways, Mark. Yeah. Well, oh, he got a kiss and a fluke. <laughs> no, if he. Yeah. Can, I don't think it lays for the five ball on the side, but no. that would have been something. It's not far off, though. Yeah. If you There's a little gap there, but you can still throw the 10 downward even with a little gap as long as it's a slow speed. Oh, maybe it's close. Yeah, I was looking on the monitor, but then when I look out on the table, but it's got to throw quite a bit from that range. Yeah, but it will. I mean, now the slick table, the new felt – Keeps it from throwing as much, believe it or not. And so, clean balls, polished yeah, balls. Yeah, but I think at a slow speed he gets it. Ooh, yeah. he tried to cut it. Maybe he didn't recognize he could throw it downward a hair. Huge spot in the match here. 6-4, Fetter broke the balls here in game 11. 
But now Josh with the first real open shot. This is funny as well. Got to kill the ball. Take the shot on the two. And he's going to have to take a little bit of a shot on the three, most likely, huh, Mark? Back and forth yeah, with the he, cue ball. Yeah, he can go right at the five ball here, though. He's pretty safe. Yeah, I don't he doesn't think want to try to get cute coming backwards. Yeah, I wouldn't go backwards myself. No, he hit that so sweet. Nice speed. Huh. I forgot about that. You can't play a little longer shot if, you, yeah, if like you're a that. good shot maker. Yeah, and it's kind of like this. You, you know, you come play in the 10-footer. You just better have a talk with yourself that you're going to have to make longer shots. It's yeah. just, it, not only is, yeah. it, is it part of the game because mathematically the table's bigger, but it's just part of the game anyways because you, you give up a little bit of uh, distance to, to get a little more security. All right, you draw this or you chip this? You got a choice. I think if you, he's going to draw. Yeah. No, he's chipping. So. Yeah, chipping, you got to really, you know, make sure you just don't hit it. You could the ball could hug on you and lose the line a little bit. But a lot of times filler will draw out of that versus uh chipping it. Nine up long most likely. Just kill the ball here. Right. Just trickle this over. Well, he's drawing. No, he's trickling. Yeah. He just had to throw it a little bit. And he got a hair, you know, to make it clean, a clear decision here if you're going to stun it out. Yeah, he did. Nice shot. And he stunned it forward also in case yeah. it didn't come out. Then it makes this cut play easier if he doesn't get this much angle. Well, you know, Fetter's great at the stun. Um, I kind of say and Filler's Filler, the best I've ever row, seen because he with uses it even now. more than most. Six to five. Uh, and he does it under pressure where a be lot great. of people wouldn't want to have to stun the ball in certain shots under pressure. I mean, like ridiculous stun shots, like real light ones at times. And now six to five, our National Beard Academy rack track. Four in a row there in the middle for, for Gorris now to the TPA. 923 had dropped a little bit and climbed a little for, for filler. No, no surprise there. 923 and 875. So on track, essentially, right? As far as like hold and serve, you know, now Filler's got a chance if he can win here, get it 6-6. Six, six. Seven ball down. One ball's nice, and the two's mm. even better. <laughs> Four is going to open up, it looks like. Yes, it is. Yeah, whether it does or doesn't, that is not <laughs> what, what Gorsh wants slow to him see. Down, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, you could put that four on another table, and Filler's going to probably get out anyway. Somehow. Nice clearance in this last rack, and now he comes right back to the table with a golden scoring opportunity. Yeah. Doesn't want too much stretch here because he wants to play the three simply in the side. Like, he'd like to stop his ball on the two and play the three in the side to get on the four. But this is good. Nice natural angle. Ooh, did he get a little straightish? He did. I think now he can follow towards the eight. I think he still stuns myself. But he can. Or he could hold right there, I guess, right? And shoot the four. You don't have to move the cue ball much at all. The five's over the pocket. Oh, he went for the side. So. And that was a stun follows to keep him off the rail there. Yeah, and maybe maybe improve the line of the cue ball a little bit too, maybe. Yeah. The six goes by the eight, so he'll just hold the ball here to go with top inside on the five. Oh, he, he wanted more angle. He didn't want that flat angle. This is fine, though. He didn't want to shoot the six by the eight either. Look, look outside pocket. Yeah, now he's got to work the ball more. Uh, so, I mean, not saying it's a tough shot for this guy, but a little bit more work. A little stretched and a little flat. Does he just lay up for the side here, most likely? Yeah, I think. I could go on and go three rails around. He doesn't mind right. the sides anyways. Yeah, I think that plays the easiest for him. He could just, yeah, just, just bounce this out. Super sweet angle there. That's like gin. Sometimes you can fall a little funny, let up on the stroke on those types. It's very easy to do because you don't want to overhit it and get steep on the nine. Well, maybe not the route we expected, but kind of did expect a close match, and now 6-6 six, six mark. 
Three in a row, and Joshua Filler has wow. tied it. Six, yeah. six. Heading yeah, into rack fast. 13, and Fedor Gorse will have the break. That was a break and run, Jeremy. Just his fourth of this set. <laughs> Four already. Yeah. He's got six games yeah. total. So 60% of his wins have been without Filler, excuse me, Fedor coming to the table. Better wants to remedy that dry break mm -hmm. he had in the last. Boy, what a battle we got going on here. Yeah, this is going to crown our first champion of the uh, Derby City Classic, the 2022. Tomorrow night we'll do the bank pool. Yeah, move on to the one pocket and then finish up with the, the nine ball, which... You know, it always seems to improve somehow, the nine ball here at the DCC. That's one thing I'd like to say thank you to them for. But now even more point, important with some rankings involved, huh, Mark? Yeah. I mean, you know, this, this thing's thing escalating, is. right? So that's two dry breaks in a row. Now he missed the one again a little bit, threatened the side pocket even. Yeah. So you, he'd love to hit this full and drag the cue ball behind the five, banking the one away. He's got to strike it nicely, though. Look at that touch. Yeah. And that's a – he's a little nice. It's, he's a lefty. He may have left a little gap. We'll see. But what a super nice shot that was. Oh, man. All right. So, Mark, how do you swerve the ball and then make it go straight? That's what he, <laughs> that's what he needs here. There is a way. you got to get up on top of the ball more. Uh, Paya showed me that 20-something years ago. So you, what you do is you hit higher on the ball with the with the left English if you want it to curve initially and then quit curving. Hard shot here. Four balls in the way a little too if he overdoes it. Beauty. Beauty. Man, that's some touch there. I know it was a, a little guesswork as far as what, what the outcome was going to be, but what a nice shot. He didn't leave the one, did he? Yeah. Oh, wow. He's trying to come between the six and eight. And just take the cut on the two. Well, he wants to come down to the second diamond here on this long rail. Oh, he right got nice. on that diamond wow. right there. I didn't know he could apply side spin to that shot as well. I thought he had to hit just center because the seven had him cut off. He actually got a little flat here, but should be okay. Definitely going to have to use some power. Wow, look at what he's looking at. He's going to come up above the five, get to the, you know, about the third diamond, and then bounce out into this. Ooh. I don't know if we can get the, yeah, you yeah, see there he's playing on, if we can grab yeah. the overhead, coming down into yeah. here from that. He's going to go here yeah, to here. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that when you're rolling the ball, but to stun like that, you know how hard to predict yep. that? That's a go. hard thing to predict with stun. If you're doing it with an angle and rolling, hey, fine. But I think maybe that was going a little too far. I thought he may come back and just take the shot on the th on the three from about where the nine's at. That was a hard one to predict. Uh, as great as he is at stunning the ball, maybe the best I've ever seen. It was just a tough, tough, uh, tough route with that type of cueing. The object ball was off the rail. It wasn't right on the rail, so that made it way oh, tougher. He sweet. picked up a little top spin. He hit that exactly how he wanted, right on the... <laughs> right on the hit. button. Yeah, exactly. As it spins to a stop just now. Yeah, and what you do, you may have to go for this and just take a little gamble with the cue ball going one rail at the eight. You know, and the only reason I say that, I mean, he could bank it around, I guess. He could bank the three around and try and figure out somewhere to go with the cue ball, but. Yeah, this is tough. Yes, it is. <clears throat> six, six is our score. Yeah, and I think, like I said, he wants to shoot at it. He could go naturally around the eight, in between the eight and the side pocket, but is he going to escape for a pocket on the four because it doesn't pass the five? This is interesting. Uh, if he cues it with a hair left, I think he's trying to go behind the eight. Yeah, I feel like he's playing safe here rather than offense. Really? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't see the safety, I'll tell you that. Uh, he was shooting. And it's an odd thing, but ever since the timeout at six to four, and I thought it was a wise timeout. 
Things have changed a little bit in Filler's way. Filler can rub the rail, rub the three ball to the rail. Uh, yeah, he might hit the three with the rail. Maybe. Look at this. He's going to get a nice safety somehow. Hmm. <laughs> I think he doesn't want this win. Normally, he wouldn't push one on like that after right. what looked like a little bit of a fluke, you know, like so. Yeah, you've got two super competitive guys. Yeah. Here, so. Yeah, and the thing about all these tournaments with these fields is, you know, you don't do it again. This is a one-time deal till next year, right? Never right. be another one of these 2022 Bigfoots with this kind of field or this particular field. So, Okay, should just kick to the side rail here with a high ball. You're hoping the three kind of banks away and the cue ball continues to come downward towards the 6-7 in this back rail. You really don't want to break open the 6-7 from here. No, but, I mean. Yeah. You, you, you try to get to the left. Some risk. Yeah, I mean, right. like earlier we were talking about a shot, and, and they kind of missed an easy kick. Uh, it looked like trying to do too much or trying to avoid something else. And uh, I think here, just a high ball, take your chances. Medium speed-ish. Oh, he went really light. Watch out, corner pocket. Yeah, that was. He was trying to prevent hitting the six, and then that was the price that was extracted for that. Yeah, and I wonder what he's going to do with the six here. Looking at the six in the side here. Off. So he wants to get behind the five, it looks like, here in a moment. I don't think there's any other way. Oh, he's wanting to break that out. Ooh, what a, what a crafty, crafty thought trying to use the eight to break out the six, seven. And it was sitting there. It was laying nice to do so, actually. And now he's gotten kind of straight and on the rail. If he can get the cue ball to where it's at now, now he's got a lot of traffic, but he may be able to get to the back of that six. Does he play the bank to get down there, Mark? Just roll the four in, play the bank <laughs> to slide down underneath it? It's not bad. Looks like the shot to me. Just because he's so straight on the four. Well, he's yeah. trying to get over here. He's he goes get too behind far. behind it, though. If he goes too far, that's a real yeah. problem. Yeah. Kind of done with it now. Now he's looking for a safety somewhere. He's going to move the five ball quite some ways, or he should. Just cue ball to the side rail and then to the end rail, maybe. Oh, up on the eight. Man. Good execution. Yeah. And that's Tremendous shot. What I talked about the other day, like a Rodney Moore is playing very unorthodox safeties at times, something you don't standardly play all the time, but really just showing off the talent. He had Rodney Moore's. He played some of the darndest safeties I ever saw, and it was just purely talent. I mean, what he could do with his touch and his, I, I, his I cueing. And I love broadcasting his matches, and here's why. The most... Uh, one of, you know, terrible layout of balls he could run out. When they're, like, all stop shots, he can't concentrate. <laughs> like, he, he, never never know, out, right? no, he never gets out good when all the balls are laying open. Oh, Beauty. nice play. Beauty. He's going to get a kiss and open oh, the six. Wow. Brutal. <laughs> he did his job. Well, welcome to pool. This is the big leagues. A little light there. So still not quite, you know, in perfect form yet. I mean, that's a missed target on the cue ball there. So now he's got to make sure he doesn't land on the rail shooting the six to the seven. That'll hurt getting to the eight. And a nice shot. So good with the center ball, mm. isn't he? And just floats that cue ball, just effortless. Never a doubt. Okay. Again, I wouldn't say he's totally in form, but he's – Feeling better, that's for sure. Okay, little side pocket shot. 
little bit of an angle, but he'll certainly slow the cue ball down with either rolling it or checking the cue ball, maybe throwing the nine in a hair. Oh, he moved it. He caught a little bit of the point he there. He did, too. Yeah, he's not pocketing as purely as we're no. used to seeing them, and then the speeds are off because of it. But this for another lead change. Feller now has seven. Well, we got a battle on the yeah, Bigfoot. Seven away, six. Filler now leads, and Filler. That's four in a row for Filler too, right? Yeah. We'll have the break. I remember about an hour ago you said something about Hill Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. Look at that. To, starting to look about right. Yeah, they were swapping a lot of racks uh, at the beginning, and then a little four packs by each guys, each of the two players. Very similar at the stats. 69-60 in balls pocketed. A little bit off on the TPAs between the two, but not too far, believe it or not. Five and six, right behind the one. And he came across it again a little bit, man. They're, they're coming across the one a little bit. That's why we're seeing some of these dry breaks. There's a few guys like Shane, like Tyler. When they cross the one over, it's such a great connection. It really doesn't slow balls down, usually from going mm -hmm. in, it seems like. Uh, but the lighter speeds, uh, seems like it does affect some of the lines of the object balls. And, and now we'll see what Filler wants to do. Probably. Well, Gorst is probably going to cut this in past the eight ball over here, right? <laughs> no. Nope. One and two, the nine, and wrap the cue ball a couple rails between the three, seven, and down, maybe? Can he do that with a yeah, high that's... left English? Well, he's looking at the other side of the one. Looks like the right side of the one. Okay, that'll tell you something about this kid right here. Wow. Huh? Wow. And that's what <laughs> I was talking about with Mika and who was it earlier the other day? Shaw. When they get those long rail banks and it's facing them right, right, I mean, just looking them right in the face, it's very hard for them to pass on them. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, you got one, one. Little fettered gorse on one shoulder and another fettered gorse on the other shoulder playing, you know, saying safe or offense. And it seems like the, the offensive guy always wins because those guys shoot at those. Reminds me of when Mika won his world nine ball championship. You wouldn't believe how many one balls he long rail banked in <laughs> after the break. And then he'd just run four or five racks on you. Got to draw past it here. Friendly bump on the seven. And a nice, light, friendly bump on the three, and the four does pass the nine. It's tight, but it does go. He didn't even think about safety on the one, huh, Mark? I guess not. I thought he might try to cut it, but then that wasn't right. And then the shot that he played led the cue ball right onto the two. So that's justified trying the hard bank, which he made look easy. Yeah, and when they're on that tight angle, you know, where they know they can slide the ball up the rail a little bit on the bank. Yeah. That's when they know their stroke is going to make the pocket pretty mm -hmm. darn big and very hard to pass up. Okay, probably draws for the side here. No reason not to. Yeah, and like you always say, the game-winning shot, right? Or the, the winner, or however you label it. But that's what that one ball was in Fetter's mind. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and that's the, that's the other th great thing about these two and a lot of the players these days. They're real, really willing to bet the match on themselves. Meaning, yeah. instead of somebody kicking it out of there, let me take on the shot. And that's you got to appreciate the heck out of that. Well, of course, just trailing 7-6, and that was a naked bank, a naked, yeah. naked straight rail bank. You're betting the game on this and maybe maybe a couple games. Well, I mean, you know, some days, which is rare, I think, they, you know, they get told their, their gut says, okay, maybe not, maybe the safety this time. But, you know, that's how sports are, you know. It tells you sometimes now's the time to make this bank right here because we do definitely. I've felt a momentum change here in the last 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have and everyone else in the room and maybe Fetter Gorse himself. So now he knows he breaks if he gets these down at 7-7. Seven, seven. And uh, maybe just kind of take over the match from here.
Yeah, because a lot of people think pool is real cut and dry. If you get this situation, you always do this or you always play safe. It's not really the case. Right. There's Sometimes early in the match, you try to play conservative, and then after you get limbered up and you're stroking good, you be a bit more aggressive. Yeah, and how the match goes, you know, every time I played safe, he's kicked out of it. Oh, it's alternate break. I get to break next, and I'm 50-50 on the shot. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and how you're feeling is, and how the table conditions are make a huge difference. If this is a real sticky table, you know, like at pool rooms and stuff, that's a hard bank. That's a very hard bank. Look how good his speed control was on that as he came across the shot line. Yeah. 7-7. Seven, seven. And Gorse oh, ties it again. <laughs> Very courageous bank so shot. He'll be going into rack 15, all tied, seven apiece. Gorse will have the break. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot more going on in today's game with some of these players than, you know, just, just fundamental and let me make balls. I think they really put a lot into it mentally. TPA's 921 and 885 for the two players. Ball's pocketed 70 to 69. <laughs> there you go. That ball's pocketed is a big figure. So important. Well, with any of that field, but definitely with these two, we're gonna we're gonna crown a true champion here in just a little while, that's for sure. The nine and the five right behind the head ball here, and that's he's going to want to square that up and start getting those balls to start following in the side. That's what leads to breaking runs. Yeah, it's the nine more often than the five when you're breaking from the right. It's usually the ball you're on the same oh, side of. Ugly kiss. He's yeah, gonna he's going to get a piece of the one, but I don't know about a makeable one. Yeah. All right, so he won't roll out. He'll bank the one kind of towards the ten. And draw the cue ball with low right to the side rail and try and bleed it over there behind the six and five, the 21.4. Yeah, Gorst is pointing this tip over there by the six ball. He'd love that six to filter in there. Yeah, and that's what I think. I mean, you bank the one towards the 10-ish, mm -hmm. kind of. you got to cut it to create speed on the cue ball, and then the right English will kill it and let it just drag over. Well, and the right English is needed to hold the line to go over there. Oh, too. yeah, and yeah. slow the cue ball down. It does both at the same time. The key to this is don't be afraid to cut it a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you hit it thick, you could really lose the shot entirely. Much more room for error if you cut this a little more. Yeah, there you go. He actually cut it too much, and he's going to give up a little bit of a play, but I think he's supposed to try that shot and not roll out. It's kind of like a one pocket. You kind of try to bank it towards that corner there where the 10's at. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the line you're on. And the difference of hitting the 10 with that one ball or where you went is only just a... Oh, yeah, yeah a little bit. Just a, probably half a millimeter difference. I think he's got to keep it simple and push the one past the two and go to the rail and just simply land behind the two ball. And he's jacked up all ball fouls. Yeah, that's all he could do there. Exact shot. Keep it simple. Made it... <laughs> Simple made it very difficult to kick at. Where's he going here, Mark? Two rails between the four seven. Oof. <laughs> I don't know if Filler realized yeah. how devastating of a safety he was playing right there. Oh, this is really tough. Now you want to kick at this most likely. Uh, yeah, I know I the three eight is playable. I know the five six is playable, but they're tough. So you want to, unless it's just stupid, you want to try and kick at this. I don't know if we can get the overhead. He's looking at the side rail, but I'm thinking. Here, here, and you got a pretty big target because well, you can get rail. Yeah, that's what I thought because I didn't think he had the side rail. But if he's got the side rail, it's hard not to go this way, right? He's going to dig and warp. Yeah, again, give it time to bend. Cue ball's coming towards the three and all that, though. Oh, solid impact. Yeah, look he's going to get a reward, right? Big time. Oh, he deserves it if he didn't. <laughs> He dodged the kiss that time. He, he kicked similar on the five to the other. I feel like he left way. the bank. Maybe, but still. Yeah. Great shot. Exactly. Great shot is right. Well, he's definitely got the safety maybe behind the five-ish or towards the five if he doesn't want to play the bank. Man, how pure is he playing? Oh, my. <laughs> That's oh him. My. It's hard to hang a ball hitting inside the pocket from two diamonds up. Especially that angle right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That angle. Now, he can't slow roll this kick. That's obvious. So this is going to have some speed on it coming across Golly. the table. You can even scratch behind the one here. Yeah, but that the good thing is the speed may help you 
mm -hmm. ricochet a little bit more off the one, which is what he's trying to do. The thing is, if you really get focus on the second rail here, that's ideal. You know, if you were going to yeah. type it into a computer program, the second rail is what you want to hit. So it's, but it's easy to whiff the whole ball trying right. to involve the second rail as well. Going to back it in there with some draw. So he just goes past three, about two and a half. Yeah. Oh, doggone. Well. <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm just saying he tagged that so square. Yeah, and I don't know if I get fooled kicking across the four here. I think I go behind the eight. Kicking across the four here. A lot of scratches there, and it's not as easy as you think to come away with some results. Mm -hmm. I think kicking behind the eight gives you a little better chance. That cue ball can go behind to the, the side five. rail. Yeah. 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 And you could hit the two real full and bank it around, and the cue ball continued to come down a little bit, right? So. I think this shot plays better at medium speed rather than. Yeah, not, not yeah. killing it. Yeah. You don't want to baby it, though. You don't want to hit it real. Oh, high. no, you're yeah. not just filtering it. You're, yeah. you're going to have to. You ha have it hold its line. And this isn't a top English. You don't you don't want to involve a scratch right here, right? You want more center ball. I think anyways. I think if you go high, that, that scratch by the five is very, very possible. Well, he's hitting kind of high-ish. Now he lowers the tip a little. Center I like. He might be using side spin to, to get there rather than bend. Yeah, that, that brings a yeah, scratch that's up. Yeah, that's a billiard play yeah. he missed the hemisphere of the ball he hit right square he wanted to hit a little bit on the left side of that too and then the cue ball with that inside spin trickles does, towards the five yeah off the long rail yeah i thought he might have been trying to put the two on top of the six and five i think i would have tried to bang the two around that myself would, and and that might have happened too maybe that's what he was playing okay still a lot of work <laughs> look at this combo he played perfect position for it but Boy, it's a long ways from the pocket. Yeah, the stroke really opens it up, though. Good stroke, pocket's pretty big, especially when you never touch a rail. <laughs> yes, he didn't need the big pocket. There. No, that would have went well, on a, 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 yeah, a, a, a six table. by 12. Huh? It's kind of funny, like Buddy always used to say, they don't move the middle of the pocket. So he's okay with however tight you make them. Yeah, it's just like versus people. You like to bank them or you like to cut them? I'm like, well, they all cut the same. They don't yeah. all bank the same. <laughs> right. And this is a real funny uh, situation here. Does he take mm -hmm. the thin shot and go into a piece of the six? I think that's is he, or is he going to cut it and come up and down? <laughs> he pointed. He just wants to get to the middle of the table. He's just going to dice it in. And well, I mean, he can't go much further than that anyways. But w what I'm asking is, is he going to flick it with left and try and catch a piece of the six coming out? Or is he going to try and come up and down? I think he's almost got to catch a piece of the six here. With some uh, right English, excuse me, not left. He's, I think, I right. think, I think if you try to go up and down, it's hard. <laughs> you might end well, up, you, you might hit the ten. The speed, you might hit the six anyway that it takes. Right. So. Uh oh. He hit that with a lot of speed though. Cue ball, like he wanted to get thick. I would have wanted to hit just a portion of the six, not so much myself. But we at least get to see this long one he's going to come with here in a second. Practice this one before his match against uh, in his last semifinal. What was it, Shaw? He played. Mm -hmm. No, not Filler. Uh, uh, Filler played Eminem. That's right. That's right. Better right. played Shaw. Oh, the cue ball's getting kissed back for some distance here. So wow, look at this kiss. <laughs> wow, well, well, this is just going to be pure ball making here. Forget position. What's the what's the best way to hit this ball to make the ball? And that's all you're doing. You just govern the speed. Yeah, I think the speed is. It's all about the speed you like. Uh, I mm -hmm. don't. I, I don't really concern myself with the speed for the seven with it over the side. I, th I can make that from a lot of places. Or, I mean, I want to dial in on the speed I like. Don't get me wrong, but looks like a medium-ish again. I, I know I say that a lot, but you don't want to baby it and you don't want to bang it. I like the way Fatter locked in here visually here to begin with. The one thing he doesn't seem to do is adjust, which I love. Once you go down, you got to trust what you see. And you overcut it. But a great stroke. It's just that hard of a shot. Just because yeah, you oh, make a, a great stroke shot. doesn't. But he didn't flicker. I was leaning forward, watching his head and body. His transition was smooth. It's just that hard of a shot that. 
Did it surprise you to be at that light of speed? It did to me. I felt like he was going to shoot through it and come to this back rail with the cue ball myself. So I'm not saying it was wrong or right. It just shocked me whenever I saw him hit the lighter speed is all. I was, uh, I, well, I was buying into what you were saying with the speed that you like. You know, yeah, and then that, that must so, have been the speed he liked. Yeah, yeah we so all have our preference, that's for sure. I think he felt like the shorter swing enabled a little, a little more accuracy. accuracy. All right, no short swing <laughs> there. You know, on the ball that uh, Filler missed, it was a couple of medium length back swings on that last one. He came way back, and powered up. It still wasn't hideously struck, but wasn't as pure as we're used to seeing him make some balls too. And Filler retakes the lead. Eight seven. What a as match! One we got game going on lead here. heading into rack sixteen, and he'll be breaking. Of course, still over nine hundred. Yeah, there's the National Billiard Academy rack track. This is about as equal as it can be. Filler has a, well, he has four breaking runouts in this match already. Yeah, we talked about earlier, a little analogy with golf. A guy that don't mind a bogey or two here or there, maybe even an occasional double bogey because he just puts so many birdies on the card, right? I mean, it's just, yeah. he makes up for it. Even in the alternate break format, he just still makes up for it. Much square hit for Filler on that particular break and much better ball action. Yeah, that square hit means a lot. You can always tell by how close the one is to that corner. Now, does the three pass the nine? <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't. So he's going to have to draw this back behind it. I think he can hold the line. The four's over the pocket, so nothing really too much to worry about there. You know, Filler will probably play that five in the side again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. what he's positioning for now. Yeah, he wants to get in between the 5-8, but nothing close. Just get there as quick as you can and stay there. Don't worry about getting close to your work. No, he just needs to look at the 5 in the side. He doesn't need to be close for this one. So good at that shot right there. I yeah. watched it for a week straight when lucky enough to do the make it happen with the straight pull, 8 ball, and then 10 ball. And with the eight ball and the straight pull especially, he just made made that shot look easy, and it's really not. I know I know it's just a little stop shot going to the rail, but he seems to control the speed just uh, every time. That's a little hot, it seemed like, but so now he's got to draw the ball instead of using the rail. Good follow. He's going to measure it up now. Hey, can I simply draw over to the center of the table and cut the nine, or do I really need to? Bring it back. Indecision a little bit here? Yeah, I think, you know, there's, uh, well, you want to be committed to your shot. Looks like he's just going to go effective backspin. Yeah, just take the shot, though. And that's what he measured up to begin with. And I think a good decision, right? Absolutely. Go down shooting. Don't go down playing position. Oh, caught it a little heavy. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he caught that heavy to the pocket. He wanted to get to the corner off of two rails. Of course, he's one of the best in the planet on these side pocket shots. <laughs> Big game there. Yeah, Fetters, And the uh, killer of Filler takes a two game lead from that break and run, 9-7. And Gorst will be breaking, trailing by two. There's our TPAs, 87 balls pocketed to 72. That would portend the disparity in the score. Well, it kind of shows you with the errors, more errors, but more balls pocketed. And that's kind of, you know, Filler has that in him a lot, right, with some of the other, mm -hmm. some of the guys, you might see that. Okay, so Fetter seems to have straightened the breakout. Had a couple dry ones at some opportune times, but. Needs a square hit here, Mark. Really square. <laughs> Super square. Kiss on the cue ball. It's not going to slow him down, giving him a shot. And he's made three. Yeah, really nice 
what was that? Twenty one eighteen on the twenty one eight or eighteen, demon? yeah. Well, I'll tell you, he he generates a deceiving amount of power, right? Yeah. Okay. Probably, you know, I mean, he could play the three in the side to get on the four with the two being where it's at. We'll see where he gathers on the two ball. That'll definitely make his decision on the three. But he's got other options as well. He could swing the rock around for the three in the same pocket as the two, and that looks like what he's going to do. Just a hint of an angle that carries him around. Main thing here, stay off the rail. Make sure that speed off the rail is real nice. Just too many options on the three if you're off the rail with the cue ball. Okay, he's got to apply a little bit more spin than he usually uses. Doesn't want to stun this. That's a shallow angle coming in the three. He wants to broaden it with a little bit of left spin. There you go. Oh, he kind of light. Got to go a bit. Again, though, he stayed off that rail, so yeah, he can come between the eight and nine if he wants. That's right where he put his tip. He was showing himself for just the ability to visualize the result that he wants. Okay, working the clock. Okay, doesn't want a thick side of the pocket here. It could entertain hitting the eight with the cue ball, so got to hit this pure to the center. Oh, it went right by that eight. And he hit right in the center of the pocket. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm not saying it would have scratched for sure, but there was a little bit of a danger going off that eight at that angle. Mm -hmm. Could have carried the eight into a snooker position, maybe scratched the cue ball, but now exactly what he needs, a break and run here to keep the heat on filler. He's going to overrun this a hair, so he's going to have to move the ball a little more. Type of shot, you may not just hold this one. Up. You may go ahead and let the stroke out a little bit here, Mark. Yeah, I think if you play position rather than just accept position, sometimes it feels better on the next ball, psychologically. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's a weird thing. It, you might end up with the same exact length shot, but somehow it just feels better. Like you, you dictated the outcome rather than just accepted the outcome. And it's kind of like this when you do that. You're getting to at least the point you would have held it, and you might improve on it, and that's yeah. the thing. You might you might not get any better, but you're taking a chance of getting a little better, a little straighter right. on that nine. Right. This shot plays so much more comfortably Yeah. <laughs> because you played to get this. And you're facing it right in the pocket. And if he drifted, he would have had to have an angle on the nine from a little distance. So, And that requires him screwing into the cue ball on the bottom a little more and, you know, don't figure him to miss, but just heightens the chances a little bit. Ooh, caught a little on the bottom side of the pocket there. Good shot, though, and these are that, those aren't the easy shots at all. Let's no, and, you know, when you think about the entire thing here today and the last few days, these guys are not only just putting in maximum effort here on the 10-footer plan. You know, champion after champion. They're playing banks. They're playing one pocket. They're putting a lot Which of time. So out. He only trails by one. We're approaching the Joshua 11th Filler. p.m. We'll hour, right? To yeah. Get to the hill. We started at 10 this morning. And shows you how, you know, uh, you know. I talked to the 60 Minutes ladies just for a couple minutes, and I asked them mm -hmm. a little bit about what they were doing. And and they, the main comment they showed was, you know, the athletic side of professional pool. And, and um, they saw that that's where – Maybe the sport's going. A lot more athletes yeah. in the game. These guys are on a 10 or 12 hour session here today. Right. And have been for a number of days already. Right. Okay. Seven ball. Yeah, he kind of come across it just huh. a hair, but he's going to get maybe another kiss. No. Um, looks like he was going to come up with something there. Look at the eight and the 10 out there. Tangle lip. I think he, I like to keep this simple right here. Just super thin the one. And just use the nine and three, getting uh, one, two rails to the end rail. You don't want to come to the middle of the end rail here. This is not the place for it. S Steve is getting the magic rack off. This is where I think you want to thin the one. Ooh, that looks 
That looks a little more like it could give up a shot than than the other one. Is he going to hit the 10 right in the face here? Wow. Oh, that's a roll. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, just kind of didn't like that route myself anyways. And then some 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 fortune there. And he's got to bend the kick shot a little bit. Just a little. Got action here, though. One off the four in the corner. Could make the one just clean in the corner. Doesn't want to get up behind it too much, though, Mark. And a lot of times the guys will hit this with a real rolling ball. That way they come across it. Maybe they cut the one in, but the cue ball comes up towards yeah. the six. That's what he's hoping for. Wouldn't doubt if he kicks it in, to be honest with you. Wouldn't shock me. Looks like he does a lot of what I do, just try to develop a parallelogram that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like come in off that first angle, you come off the second rail at that same angle, and hopefully the math adds up with a little feel. Going to two rails here, right? Yeah. Man, he got under it. Not. Oh, that pocket. Watch out. Oh. Yeah, he knew it when he got under it. Could have been bad. So does he take care of the 8 and 10 now? Probably so. Just a little bump on the, you know, the good side of the 10. Ooh, he's coming from that angle? I thought he would play it in the other corner. Yeah, I would rather play it in the other corner myself and then stun draw into that good side of the 10-8. You got no problems in. Wow, he didn't He didn't want to fool with it. Is the 7 off the table? That's why. Okay. He's going to use the 5 to open the 8-10 with the 6 laying. That makes better sense. I didn't see the 7 was gone, Mark, but that's probably a better shot, right? Because you can shoot from the center of the table on the five and come one rail into the 10-8 and be, he, be yeah, super right. he, nice. He didn't want to get odd on the two ball there because he hit too thin on the 10 or he didn't want to accidentally hit it too heavy. And Could have got jacked up as well. Right. Yeah, this makes more sense. I was trying to see if there was a, if there was no seven on the table. So it makes perfect sense. He'll want to get to the center of the table when he shoots the four to get on the five correctly. So staying off the rail, important here. Is he getting a little flat? Yeah. He's got a little flat and going towards the bottom rail here. The short rail. So that's where he wants to be. That gives him all kinds of ways to mildly come into that 10-8. I mean, it's only going to be one rail, but yep. I mean, he can hit it with a little check, a little inside, just whatever he needs. Made up his mind. He's going forward two cushions, I guess. Uh, doesn't want it to spread on uh, him. I don't know if he got there. Yeah, it looks like a bad route. He did that earlier when he had that stun, that yeah. two cushion one, and this time he needed to get into this a little deeper, and it floated out long. Yeah, he needed to be real close to the nine ball there, right? I mean, yeah. more along the line of the nine. And that's uh, surprising to say the least. Looking to bank the bank the yeah. five back down and catch the six to slow the cue ball down? Or is he just banking the five nice and light and trying to come behind the six mildly, let the five just come up maybe a diamond or something like that? Put a little left spin on it. Oh, he's trying to get across. Wow, that was a surprising position miss. And it wasn't like critical position. There was a bunch of area there. I mean, it wasn't too tough. But again, what we all want to see, the greatest players have to come with the toughest shots. Love the way he lines up, got his eyes right down that line that he wants to shoot at. It's not so much the point on the five ball, it's the point where he wants the cue ball to go that he's shooting on, and that's what he's looking at. Pause, slow back, straight through. Oh. Stabbed yeah. it in the heart and got out of here where he might be able to go after the eight. Yeah, he can. 
It's, it's not like he can be real, real exact. Very hard to be real exact when you're full here and it looks like he has to add a hair of English to get into him. Mm -hmm. The good thing is there's not a lot of other balls around and he's not going to cream it. He's going to, you know, he might shake them loose to where the 10 and the 8 maybe come 20 inches apart, something like that, yeah. foot and a half, somewhere around there. He's not going to put a ton into it. Could stay for the bank, and he is one heck of a banker. I'll tell you that. We saw that earlier on a one ball. How you hit the pocket here makes a big difference. Yeah, and I think he's got to use a touch of spin, just a touch. Beautiful. See the speed on the breakout. Beautiful. Now, he didn't get the best result. Oh, he's got a, a pocket. Beautiful shot. Yeah, yeah. but I'm just saying it was. It it's didn't, tough. It's still tough, yeah. Yeah, it didn't fall good, but that's all he could do. Yeah, and pay attention again to how well he controlled the breakout. It's not when they're out in the middle of the table. It doesn't take much to separate two balls. Like he wasn't going to glance and run the cue ball at that speed or nothing. Uh, it was always going to be pretty tidy. Well, he's looking down like he's shooting a corner. Oh, yeah. He's got oh, a pocket. Oh, I thought he yeah, had to go got, side pocket. No, he's got a okay. pocket. Well, it's just a, still not tough because he's going away from the nine of hair, and he's a little on top of it. So nothing easy. Oh, wow. Now, this one here, he may follow through the ball. We'll see. Looks like a little flat to try and draw to the side rail. Can he just draw straight back? Is the camera fooling me here? Well, can he just come back even a foot? Would be yeah, that, that's yeah. what I mean, yeah. I, I thought he maybe had a little more angle than that, but not enough to really get to the side rail easily. Okay, he's definitely drawing. When he goes middle ball, that tip's going down for the draw stroke. <laughs> Sweet. The kid's a robot. A ball-making machine. Yeah, and everybody in the building pulling for Hill Hill has, I think, had <laughs> yeah. some effect here. We're heading that direction. <laughs> right in the heart. 9-9 nine, nine is our score. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got another tie. 9-9 nine, nine as we head into rack 19. It's a race to two. Yeah, we've had a few 11-9s. Three, I think, maybe 11-9s. Two at least that I know of. Yeah. Maybe three, so we're at least going to have a, another one of those, but you know what we're all wanting. Look at the rack track, the TPAs. Super close. Double in errors, but, you know, that's the difference in the TPAs, I think, between the two players. Filler would still just a few more balls pocketed. I have to say I miss my old partner, Danny DiLiberto, but it's been a total pleasure having you alongside, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody misses Danny D. I've got to work with him a few times. It's always fun. I used to listen to him a lot. I uh, had some of my old matches and then some of the players I really liked watching that got me in stroke, and Danny was involved yourself as well, a lot of those matches. A lot of Billy and Grady and Nick Varner. And Four and five ball right behind the one. Of course, like to square him up like he did last time. Yeah, he oh, came across it. Ball got, uh, just yeah. at the wrong time. And, and everything split open here. Yeah, he's not going to make one, so Josh is going to have to go with the full gamut here with all ten of these. But you can see the one, the two is very accessible, the three's near. Three to the four. Five doesn't pass the six, but Josh doesn't mind those side pockets, so <laughs> I like his chances. He could move the six mildly if he wanted here, but no reason to. Okay, this is the shot. This is where he needs to get that angle, probably to come two rails, zigzagging off the three. One rail, two rails dropping down for the four. We'll look at it in a moment. We can grab the overhead real quick. Too late. Yeah, we'll do it on the next shot. He's going to come straight up. To, uh, this is where he ended up short a little bit earlier. He's fine now, though. And show him what we're talking oh, there's about. there's the Mark. overhead. Yeah, if we can get to it so quick now enough. now it's here, here, here. Yeah. 
there. Yeah. And yeah, he doesn't want to get underneath the four. Be mindful of not getting underneath the four mark because then he's going away from the five. Little short, probably cues down and digs behind the five here, Mark. Five in the same pocket. Yeah, looks like it. Oh, he's killing it. Oh, no, he got there. So the eight, nine, and ten, just like the five, six, and seven, right near each other. So Filler's going to get a chance to break here to win the match. Don't see any and faltering from here. We'll see what happens here in this next rack, but, you know, that was a mistake with the scratch for sure, but you could say the break maybe left Fetter there when he had a nice lead at 6-4. to four. He broke dry two in a row. Now a scratch on the break, so maybe that's the only things that he would like to have back. And that might have prompted the scratch Pillar on the break because the, the dry hill. breaks makes you want to do something extra and then yeah. you try to overdo it. Yeah, and, and it's, filler it's, it's will easy, have the break right? Sometimes, the you know, you want more balls moving. Ball challenge. But, I mean, Fetter's played a super great match besides just a couple of dry breaks. Uh, can't really think of, you know, he's had a few mistakes on layouts. But, I mean, when you say mistakes, it's almost always got to be a super tough situation. And the same right. thing for, J for Josh. Yeah. He hasn't been missing wide open balls, that's for sure. Now, Josh, even more impressive, hasn't had his best hitting the pocket, really. Hasn't had his best with his cue ball speed and still here at 10 to 9. So, shows you that purebred champion. Now, he came across it a little bit. We'll see. Is he going to get another friendly kiss here? Ooh. He can make it, but he's going away from the, the two ball mark. Hmm. He can throw that ball in, but he's going away from the he two. Is he going to try and kill it with inside? The nine's a huge know. ball. The nine's a huge ball. Now, he could bank the one across and tuck the cue ball underneath the two easily. A little draw stroke. He's not prone to want to do that, I He's guess. trying to go around the balls. Oh, no, he's playing the safety. He's oh. got to play the safety. Uh-oh. He's disappointed he didn't do uh -oh. better with that effort. We may see a long rail bank if this goes by the four. It's tight, I guess. He had a little shake of the head. That's the first thing Fetter looked at was the long rail bank. And that's probably where where Josh has struggled the most. He he you know, the pocketing the balls has hasn't been the cleanest, but most of them have gone down. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a few safeties uh, and then a few rollout situations that, that hasn't been his best overall, I think. Now the safety here is probably to really use the nine, bank the one mildly up towards the four. Go to the back rail with the cue ball and let the two slow the cue ball down. You got to make sure you get the one past the side pocket, and that's going to require a little bit of a cut, too. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a pretty doable okay, shot. He's yeah. playing the bank, though. Oh, my. He's going to give up a little clip on the one from nowhere. I would have rolled that myself, rolling the one on the four, but, man, he, I thought he hit it really, really well, Mark. He's got to jack up. Watch out for this corner where the nine's at. Watch out for this corner where the nine's at. It was on that line when you got to make it spread. Ooh wow. we. <laughs> <laughs> he had to take a chance, though, yeah. because he had to mildly throw the ball in plus create power. He's just the center of the table here from away from getting out. This gets him across for the five. He can play from underneath, too. He's so close. He could play the five, five in the side as well. Yeah, I like that. We've seen him do it in the entire match, right? Right. That was conservative. Jeremy says, just use your talent. Well, I think that's what he's doing right here. Yeah. Playing right into his strength. Yeah, you hear it, you know boxing and corner men and different other things golf i lucky enough to be around a few of those caddies at times and hear the things they say to those players he's gotten a little funny here though drawing towards the side following towards the 10 he may have to just pinch this back and take a shot in the upper corner 
Can't get to the rail because the side's in the way. Oh, he could. Well, he had the stun draw. Yeah. He couldn't effective draw. Been a little downward on it. Okay, and then he comes a little up with the tip, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Filler knows that it wasn't probably, it was a fine match, but nice to get this win with maybe not your A-plus game. Match ball here. Josh Filler. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Filler. <laughs> Some serious emotion. But that is, it's a high quality win. Your new that? Bigfoot 10 uh, ball the challenge champion, the killer Filler. And please make some noise. One more round of applause for his opponent. That Gorst. You play amazing, man. I shot a 900 and lost yeah, in the finals. 906, and you can see really the crowd loves them all, but man, they We're going to really do the check presentation and a quick that. couple of yeah. words yeah. with Joshua here in just men. a moment. Well, this has been another great AccuStats presentation of World Class Pool. Thank you for sharing your time. Drive safe and so long for just a while.